Hi there. Thank you for joining me in our study in 1 Corinthians. Today we are in chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. My name is Stuart Gould, and it's such a pleasure to bring this message to you. Today we're going to talk about spiritual growth. We're going to talk about how a baby starts out with milk and needs to progress to solid food in order to reach a maturity in their body that they can sustain life. And we have the same issue with us as Christians and Paul is writing to the church in Corinth who has been stagnated because they are not experiencing this growth and so I believe today that we are going to get some equipment for us we're going to hear something that's going to help us to grow and to mature in the Lord so come with me and let's see how we can take what the word is saying here and apply it to our lives once again thank you for joining me in our study in the book of first corinthians as i mentioned already we are in chapter 3 starting at verse 1 and paul remember is writing this letter to the corinthians because of many issues and we're going to see that right at the beginning here so let's just jump right in in verse 1 brothers i could not address you as spiritual but as worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. In this reading, we can see that Paul is dealing with the people here because they should have been of some maturity, but they haven't come to a point where they have a maturity in them. I address you not as spiritual, but as worldly, mere infants in Christ, he says. You know, I gave you milk because you were not ready for solid food. And you're still not ready. So he's really getting after them here because there isn't a maturity that's happening in the Lord. And this often happens when people get saved. And especially if in the message that they are receiving, that they believe that they're accepting Jesus so that when they die, they can have eternal life. They can go to heaven then there isn't a maturing in their relationship. Now, I have a series that I do, I call it The Journey, and it's about the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, and their walk in the wilderness for 40 years and eventually coming into the Promised Land. And it's a roadmap of our Christian walk. Through this roadmap, through this journey that they go through, there's many opportunities for them to get stuck in certain places. And this is the way it is in our Christian life. God wants to take us through a series of events and a series of things in our life to teach us and to show us how we need to walk with Him. If you look at the children of Israel, there was two million that came out of Israel at that time who were 20 years and older. But out of those two million, only two reached the promised land because they didn't grow and mature in the things of God. Their faith in God had been so stifled because they had been in bondage for 420 years. For 420 years, their relatives had been praying for freedom and nothing had happened. They had a hard time trusting God. Every time they got in the wilderness, if there was a, a lack of a little bit of water or food or whatever, they said, oh, why did you bring us out here to die? We, should, we could have died in Egypt. Aren't there graves in Egypt for us to die? You know, and the food they would receive from God. Oh, you know, when we were in Egypt, we had meat and onions and leeks and... And they forgot they had to work 16 hours a day to get it, right? They never come to a point where they matured in their relationship with the Lord. They were just constantly grumbling and complaining, constantly remember living in the past. Those two million people that left Egypt died in the wilderness, except for Joshua and Caleb. Their children and their grandchildren 
who were raised under God providing everything for them, living through the wilderness, having food provided for them every morning, having meat provided for them at night, having water provided for them whenever it was needed, having God fight enemies that came after them for them, having their clothes and their shoes not wear out for 40 years, who had experienced all the things that God did, they had such a trust and a faith in God because they didn't have anything from the past to remember. And they were totally focused on what God was doing for them. So they grew in a maturity to a point when Joshua said, okay, we're gonna go across the river. They got to cross the river and to Golgotha, which is a, a whole story of what happened at Golgotha. But from there, they went to Jericho and God told them not to go and to break down the walls or anything, but to march around the walls once a day for six days. And on the seventh day to march around seven times and then blow their trumpets and shout and the walls would fall down. And they did it without question. They did it without question because they had matured in the Lord. They had put their faith and their trust in the Lord. Here we have these Corinthians. It's always a issue when you get to this type of place where, where there's lots of commerce and lots of uh, work and a lot of industry and whatnot, and people get self-dependent. And when we get self-dependent, then we have a difficulty growing in God because we think we can do it ourselves rather than trust in Him. I just want to remind us again of the verse in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not live as the world lives. Don't participate in the things of the world. Now, it's obvious here that the people in Corinth were not living like that. They were not living away from the world. They were being part of the world because they were not maturing. They were not growing. And that means that they weren't in the word, that they weren't worshiping, they weren't spending time with God. They didn't understand somehow that God had called them into a relationship, had called them as sons and daughters to walk with him in the time right there and then. This brings us to a point where we need to look at our own life. Where are we in the maturity in our life? And I have a series that I'm going to put the link uh, for the first one down below. And it was the first series I did. So the recording and all that's not that great, but the message is really wonderful. And it's called Body, Soul and Spirit. In that series, I teach us how we are dividing body, soul and spirit and how those different parts work and interact with us. And how, if we're allowing the things of the world into our soul, through our eyes, through our ears, you know, through our five senses, if we're allowing the things of the world into our soul, then it's difficult for the things that are in our spirit to come out into our soul and manifest into our body. And I compare our soul as a garden. And a garden does not care what kind of seed you put in it. Whatever seed you put in a garden will grow that seed. I mean, if a garden could determine what seed to grow and not to grow, then it wouldn't grow weeds. It would only grow good seed. But a garden is not like that. A garden will grow whatever seed gets put into it. And the other thing that's important for us to understand, whatever kind of seed you grow is the fruit that you're going to get. The crop you're going to get is going to be dependent on the seed that you sow. You cannot sow a tomato seed and get a cucumber. It doesn't work. It doesn't matter how much you want a cucumber. doesn't matter how much you pray over it. doesn't matter what you do. If you sow a tomato seed, you're going to get a tomato. It's the same thing in us. If we're sowing things of the world through our eyes, through our ears, through these different mediums, if we're sowing the things of the world into our spirit, then the, the crop we're going to get, the fruit we're going to get, is going to be fruit of this world. It's not going to be maturity in the Lord. If you want maturity in the Lord, then you have to sow things of the Spirit. You have to watch. You have to be careful of what you're looking at. You have to be careful of what you're listening to. You have to be careful of what you do. Because 
Everything that we do and everything we see and hear becomes a seed in us. Now, of course, if we see something by accident or we hear something by accident, we can take that thought captive to the obedience of Christ and we can get rid of that seed and we can weed weed our garden, right? So that we get a good crop. And as we focus on the Lord, as we read his word and pray and worship and study, then out of our spirit comes life that comes into our soul, uh, into our garden, our soul, and then we reap a good crop that brings us to maturity and is uh, evident in our body. Because the body is just a manifestation of the seeds that we're planting. That's why the Lord tells us that by their fruit, you will know them. By the fruit, by looking and seeing their life, you will know what kind of seeds are being planted. If you go to somebody's house who has a garden, you see that garden growing, and you see that they have carrots and tomatoes and cucumbers growing, you know what seeds they planted by what's growing in the garden. You can't get a different fruit from a different seed. You can't say, well, I planted good seed, but I got bad fruit. No, that doesn't work that way, right? So he says, I've been, been giving you milk, and yet you're still needy that because you're still involved in the world. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere men? We are supposed to be different, right? We're supposed to work different. That's what it says in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We need this transformation in, your, in our life. Here, the, the people in Corinth had not gone through this transformation. They had accepted the Lord, but they hadn't gone any further. They hadn't pursued the relationship with the Lord. And anyone who is of any age who has been married or is in a relationship of any kind, you know that that relationship can only be if you're constantly working on it. My wife and I have been married for 46 years and we've had lots of ups and downs in our marriage. Mostly be probably because of me, because I don't pursue as much as I should. And that's what's important for us in any relationship. We need to constantly be pursuing in order for the relationship to grow and to mature. And this is what it is with the Lord. This is why I dislike the gospel that is preached oftentimes, except Jesus, and when you die, you will go to heaven. Now, get, don't get me wrong here. I believe that. I believe if you accept Jesus when you die, you're going to go into eternity. But there's so much more than that. It's not just about when we die. It's about right now. God desires to have an intimate relationship with us right now. He desires to walk with us now. He desires for us to continue to grow in our relationship with him. And so what was happening here in Corinth, they were accepting the Lord, but they weren't growing. They were taking the milk of the word, but they, they weren't digesting it properly. They weren't getting the effects from it. This is one of the reasons that meditation is so important. And I've talked about that a bit before, but in case some of you haven't heard that, is that meditation is so important when we think about reading the word and we look at it and we digest it. Now, let's not get confused with meditation because, of course, there's transcendental meditation and all those new age things out there, and we're not talking about that. Meditation is just thinking about chewing on something. Who of us can worry? We all can, right? We all know how to worry. Well, worry is just meditation to the negative. You're just thinking about something to the negative. You're not bringing God into the picture, right? You're only thinking to the negative. Well, meditation is the same thing. And so we need to read the scriptures and take scriptures and meditate on them and chew them. It's like our body. We take food, we have a plate of food, we cut a small piece off of that, and so we're breaking it down so that we can get it into our body, and then we put it in our mouth, then we chew it, we further break it down into parts so that when we swallow it, it can go down to our stomach, and then our stomach can handle the smaller pieces and break them apart. And it keeps breaking these things apart so it can get out of that food the value that is in there for our body. Now, 
It's the same thing with the Word of God. We need to chew on the Word of God. We need to digest that Word of God so that we can get the value from that Word into us. It isn't done by just reading over and, oh, I'm going to read the Bible in a year, and so you do your Bible readings every day. That has an effect on you. That has that does something for you. But you need to pick a verse or two out of that that you can chew on for the day that you can be thinking about as you're going about whatever it is that you're doing so that you can get the value of that word out of out of it and that it can be applied to your life that the Holy Spirit can give you revelation on it. And as we do this, then we start maturing and we don't end up being in the situation where these people in Corinth were, where they have been for how many years and they were still needing milk. They weren't ready for solid food. You know, if you take a baby, that baby is created to eat solid food and everything else, but not yet because it's not developed enough yet. If you take a baby and give it solid food, you're going to kill that baby. They don't even know how to eat solid food. They don't know how to get it down. And even if they do, their digestive system doesn't know how to deal with it. You're going to cause that child a lot of problems. So there's a maturing that happens. You start with milk and then, you know, adding a little bit of pablum or something to it, a little pallor or whatever to the baby and slowly building it up and then start giving little little bits of food mushed up. It's a process that happens so that the digestive system and everything can mature. And it's the same thing for us in the Lord. When we come to the Lord, we need to start with small bits, but we need to continue to do it. If that baby at any time stops eating, then that baby's going to go backwards very quickly because it needs the food, it needs the nourishment, it needs that sustenance that's in the food in order to sustain life and to grow and to mature. And it's the same thing for us. We need this stuff. We need what God has for us. It's so important for us to be in the Word of God chewing the Word of God and allowing it to come into us so that we can take what's out of it and grow. So if we find that we are not maturing, we can look at our life and we can see what the problem is. We can see that we're not spending time in the Word of God. We can see we're not spending time in fellowship. We can see we're not spending time in prayer. We can see that we're not spending time in worship. That is going to affect our life. So just like a baby, if you don't give it the proper milk and, and build it up to solid food, it will never mature. Imagine a baby, if you just gave it milk all the way, you know, 10, 12, 14 years old, and all they had is milk, the body is not going to develop properly. The digestive system isn't going to develop properly. That child isn't going to be developed properly. Even though the milk gives strength to the baby, allows it to grow, there's going to come a point where it's going to be a negative rather than a positive. It's going to come to a point where it's going to start being a detriment to the body because the body has grown beyond just milk. And if you continue to give it only milk, then that body's going to start to deteriorate and you're going to start saying, there's something wrong with this child. There's something's not happening. Something is not being done right with this child because this child was growing and getting strong and now look at it, it's getting weaker and weaker and there, there's something wrong with this child because there hasn't been this process of growth. And it's the same thing in our Christian life. We need to have this process of growth. And what Paul was finding in the church in Corinth, they did not have this process of growth because they were stuck on the milk. They weren't chewing the word of God. They weren't living the example that Paul gave them. So I hope this has been such a blessing for you and I hope this really encourages you in your walk and your growth with the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you give us food, solid food. You give us milk. You give us something to sustain life. And as we chew your word, as we go through it, we walk in relationship with you. Lord, you continue to have us grow day by day as we watch over and see what you have for us. We thank you, Father, that you have given us um, this example here in 1 Corinthians that we can look at so that we can be sure that we aren't stuck in one place and that we are growing and maturing in you. 
So, Father, I pray for each one that is listening. Lord, I just ask that you would just help them to grow and to be strengthened in you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you for joining me today in our study. I hope this has been a blessing for you. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. Take us home, girls. Bye.